love this drone shot of downtown Greensboro and just a few miles away from downtown Greensboro is the Greensboro Aquatic Center, which is where we are for the 2018 USA Swimming Winter Nationals. Hi everybody, I'm, once again I'm Jeff Cummings here to bring you another edition of Deck Pass Live. More Olympic Trials qualifiers in the books for the 2020 Olympic Trials. More Olympians stealing the spotlight and winning national titles, and I am so fortunate to have one of those Olympians Lane with us tonight, long, Micah Sumrall, the winner Madison. of the 100 breaststroke. Ah. Micah, it's great to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. So 100 breaststroke, not your top event, but it's really becoming a great event for you. You're qualified for the World Championships in it <laughs> next year. It's got to be really fun to be able to do two events now and not just the 200 breaststroke. Yeah, it definitely helps me mentally a little bit because, um, you know, just having one race at World Champs is really scary. Like it's, it's do or die almost. Uh, but having two events kind of opens it up a little bit and I can relax a little bit more on the 100 just because it isn't my best event, but I can try to do my best there. And, you know, it takes a little bit of pressure off that 200. Right. So. Well, let's talk about tonight's 100 breaststroke where you won. Uh, we're going to show some video of it here where you were in lane four, top qualifier. You know, we didn't have the reigning Olympic champion world record holder, Lola King, here. So yeah, I know you don't like yeah, to say you on you, top qualifier, maybe a little unusual for you. But take us through this race in this 100 breaststroke. Again, you're in lane four, fourth from the, from the bottom. Yeah, well, actually, my coach and I have been working a lot on my pullouts. Uh, since pan packed, just because we watched a lot of the video, and one of the things that I was really bad at was pull out. So the first pull out there was really important for me, and I think I did a pretty good job. But as you'll see when the second pull out comes, it wasn't as good. <laughs> okay, so right here, you know, more, since you're more of a 200 swimmer, how do you attack this first 50? I just uh, I try to be as smooth as possible, but pick up the tempo as much as I can. It's kind of a weird thing for me. I never quite know how to swim this race. All right, so there's that second pullout, and looks pretty good to me. I just don't get too much power off of that pull down. My arms are kind of useless. <laughs> okay. But see, now you're in this great Third battle here with these three ladies. Kelsey Wong is on your University right. And, and then three. she was the one I thought was going to be the one that was going to win this. But here, right here, 15 meters left, you turn into that 200 breaststroke endurance gear. Who's yeah. going to get away Thank goodness it? I have that extra gear because it was definitely like painful at that ahead. point. And I was like, oh, gosh. Indeed she is. And Clyde in there, 107.51. And now this isn't like your own full taper, so time-wise. I'm pretty pleased with it. Mostly I'm just looking at that second 50. I want to be as many 35s as possible because my goal towards the end of the season is being able to do a 35 consistently kind of on the second, third, and fourth 50 of my 200. So. Wow, that would be really good for you. It would be amazing. <laughs> 200 breaststroke. I'll be good if I'm like 36 low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So uh, this is a long course meet. Have you been doing a lot of long course training? Well, at the pool that I swim at, actually, we have three long course lanes and three short course lanes. So occasionally we will take out the little mini walls that we have and do some long course training at, on the weekends. Okay. So I've done a little bit. Well, that really does help. Yeah, uh, nice. So I, I want to talk about kind of going back. You, you were raised in Texas. You went to college at Auburn. You trained for a while in North Carolina, and now you're living just north of Atlanta. So you're a Southern girl. Yes. <laughs> what 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 attracts you to, to living in the South? Uh, it doesn't get that cold there. <laughs> That's true. I, Although it's a little chilly. It was a little chilly earlier. It has been a little chilly lately, and I've been doing my best to stay inside. But I am definitely not good with the cold, and I try to avoid it as much as possible. So speaking of the cold, you were just up in New York for the Golden Goggles. That had to be really frigid. They had a big freeze yes. go through there. And I, because I live in the South, I don't have that many cold jackets. So I, we walked around a lot to a couple of bakeries, but after a while I would be like, Austin, I can't, we got to go back into the hotel and defrost. Yeah, so. you have to. It was really cold. <laughs> Uh, so you went to, you said you went to a lot of bakeries. Most people go, go to New York for bakeries, but what, why, why did you go around to bakeries and what was the best one? Um, well, I have always really enjoyed baking. It's one of those things that I would like to do after I'm done swimming. Like it would be super cool to open a bakery and yeah. get to do all of that stuff. Um, my husband is really into food too, and he's been watching a couple of these like BuzzFeed shows. It's like the worth it winners and they had 
a couple from New York bakeries that were like, oh, who has the best cookies? Mm. <laughs> uh, we actually went to Levain's and they have the best cookies. <laughs> All right, well, I'm gonna have to remember that next time I'm in New York. They're, they're awesome. Cookies. They're really doughy in the center and very warm. It's amazing. All right, we may have to take a break because I've just got this cookie idea. I just want to go out and get some cookies right now. Uh, so you and your husband, you how long have you been married? Almost two years. Two Almost years two. in January. And um, he was a swimmer too. Mm -hmm. um, how did you guys meet? Actually, we met at Queen's University of Charlotte. Uh, I was attending classes there because I had finished my eligibility up at Auburn, but I was still taking classes. So I just transferred over to Queen's and because some of those classes fell during the when the pros were swimming, I just swam with the Queen's team. And right. he was on the Queen's team. That's how we met. And the rest is history, and that's <laughs> really cool. Do, now, I know you, you have a dedicated coach, but does he ever step in and coach you every once in a while? Austin? Oh, gosh. Yes, and it doesn't always work out very well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> uh, if my coach is out of town or something, I'll always I'll try to go to the practices that Austin is at because he – I guess would be the second person around there that knows my stroke the best. So I go and train with uh, with his eyes on me. And sometimes we don't get along. <laughs> but at least I hope you're able to, it's coach swimmer at the pool and husband wife at home. Yes, yes. Okay, sure. that's very good. That's very good. So you're going to world championships, as we said, next summer. It's going to be your third. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of perspective do you are you going to have going into this? Uh, I'm just going to be excited to be there. I... The last time I made it uh, was 2015, and that was kind of one of the weird summers again where you make it the year before, and then you swim it the year after, and I broke my leg in the middle of that year. Yeah, so I remember that. As long as nothing happens, we're going to knock on wood. Yeah. Uh, it'll be good. Yeah, swimmers are notoriously notoriously klutzy, so anything can happen. I don't think it was my fault, but <laughs> just playing volleyball with the crew. Well, I think that's your fault. The first thing right there, you were playing volleyball. Swimmers don't play volleyball. This is true. That's this is true. true. Well, yeah, just stay away from the volleyball courts. And I think you're going to be just fine, Micah. All right. All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much for joining us. Best you of luck in your 200 tomorrow. Thank you. And we're going to be uh, watching you in the lead up to Worlds next year. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Micah. My favorite part about Swim 1922 is the fact that we get to impact oh, African American awesome. and Hispanic communities and they're the communities that are really impacted the most. And so it's been focused for us and we've actually seen the rates reduce. Since we started this partnership six years ago, the drowning percentages specifically for the African American community has improved by 6%. Six percentage points might not seem like a lot to other people, mm -hmm. but that represents thousands of lives being saved. Since this partnership began, we have had a 6% reduction that is directly attributable to the partnership. Uh, so where I see us going is reducing that number even more. And what I would like to see is a 50% reduction. I know that that may be ambitious, but we're ambitious women, and I think we can do it. All right, so full disclosure here, I'm a breaststroker, so this is gonna be Breaststroke Day on Deck Pass Live. We just talked to Michael Sumrall, who won the Women's 100 Breaststroke tonight. And now we're gonna take a, a deep look into the Men's 100 Breaststroke, featuring Kevin Olympians Kevin Cordes and Nick Fink in a nice tight battle for that. So we're gonna take a look at that video. And again, Kevin Cordes was the top seat going into, he went 100.04 this morning. And dove diving in, you know, as Kevin Cordes does, he likes to keep it nice and long, the first 50. And he really Jeff is looking Cordes good here. He's fourth from the, the fourth games. away from us. And Nick Fink is to his left. Relay. And Nick was keeping it really Fink long, too. And we had Chuck Cadis out there in lane the number games. six that was keeping it very so aggressive. Goals, he was going to be the rabbit. And I thought at the 50 here when Kevin and Nick and Chuck turned, that all three right of them now, were going to start turning into a sprint. But I think what happened with Kevin Hicks. is, and what happens to him sometimes, is he's unable to change that gear. See, Cordes he's still keeping Cadiz. it long. His strokes Lakes are still a little six. too long at this point. Third We're about 25 meters away from the finish. Turner. And right here you see Nick seven, Fink started to turn it up to his right. Chuck Cadiz started to fall off just a little bit. 
and this is where the difference is made right here in these last five meters. Nick's picking up his tempo. Kevin's trying to pick it up, but it's too late, and Nick just goes right by him and gets the win there. One double oh point one, just a fantastic finish for Nick. And Nick's been a, he's not, um, he's not new to the 100 breaststroke. He was at world championships with Kevin in the 100 breaststroke for many years. He and Nick, he and Kevin have been trading this off for so many years. I think the key for Nick was that Kevin just could not change those gears in that 100 breaststroke. Kevin, I really thought had a chance to go 59, but um, you know, as a breaststroker, if you're unable to change that gear, at least in the last 25, it's really hard to pick up the tempo and hard to get those muscles into gear. And in breaststroke, it's such a difficult stroke to be able to do if you can't get out of that gear. In a hunter freestyle, like for example, it's hard, it's easy to do that, but not in breaststroke. And most breaststrokers can agree with me on that one. All right. So from breaststroke day tomorrow, we're going to be wrapping up our competition here at the Winter Nationals. We got a great lineup for you. More Olympians on tap to be on the top of the podium. We got the the, the 1500 freestyle. Katie Ledecky is not doing the 1500 freestyle, but we will have some Olympians and some big stars in that battling for the wins there. Jordan Wilamowski, I believe, is scheduled to do the 1500. 200 backstroke is up next. Jacob Pebbly is going to be in that for the men. Simone Manuel and Katie Ledecky in the 100 freestyle for women. And then Nathan Adrian and Michael Chadwick in the 100 freestyle for men. And then, as I said, Michael Sumrall is going to be in that 200 breaststroke for women. Kevin Kors get his revenge tomorrow on that 200 breast for men. And then the 200 butterfly, look out for Haley Flickener. She's going to be on fire. She's been having a great meet so far. So that's going to do it for us tonight on Deck Pass Live. Be sure to join us at 12.30 p.m. Eastern for another edition of Deck Pass Live. And again, go to the Olympic Channel beginning at 5 p.m. Eastern for live, or sorry, USASwimming.org at 5 p.m. Eastern for all live coverage of tomorrow's events. And then come back here after finals and we'll wrap everything up here from Greensboro. So for everybody here in Greensboro Aquatic Center, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.